Stan Jabalisco here with some more discussion about uh, antenna currents on radio frequency transmission lines, particularly in amateur radio applications. Uh, what you're looking at here is a half wavelength dipole antenna fed with coaxial cable, 50 ohm coaxial cable. <clears throat> in free space, a half wavelength antenna, an electrical half wavelength dipole antenna has a radiation resistance of about 73 ohms and no reactants. So that produces a 1.4 or 1.5 to 1 standing wave ratio on 50 ohm coaxial cable. Now you can also use 75 ohm coaxial cable, like the kind that you find for cable television applications. And if you run that all the way down to your transceiver, your transceiver will accept that. And uh, it, it'll work just about as well as a regular 50 ohm coaxial cable will. The objective is to find the cable that will produce the least amount of uh, loss between your radio and your antenna and for all intents and purposes you can use for the figure in that loss the loss per 100 feet figure provided by the manufacturer of that coax times the fraction of 100 feet that your feed line actually is I mean so that if it's if it's given as two decibels per 100 feet and you have a 200 foot feed line hope, hope it's not that long and you're going to be suffering twice that much loss, and a 1.5 to 1 standing wave ratio will not add significantly to that loss, whatever it may happen to be. But there's one inherent flaw in the design of feeding a dipole antenna, like this one, which is a balanced antenna with an unbalanced transmission line. You're always going to run the risk of antenna currents occurring on this line because this is not a symmetrical system. Even if you could run this line away at a 90 degree angle from your antenna all the way to your radio, uh, you would still suffer an imbalance in the line because that's the way the line is designed. It's an unbalanced line. So this would be an asymmetrical system and you would run the risk of antenna currents and that risk would be enhanced if this feed line happened to be any multiple of a quarter of an electrical wavelength long. Even if you have a, a really good ground right here at your radio, electrical and radio frequency ground, right at your radio, you're still going to have the possibility of radiation from this transmission line because of the antenna currents set up as a result of the inherent asymmetry in the system. Well, what, how, what can you do about that? I mean, now you can feed this, uh, this uh, antenna with balanced line and use a transmatch between your radio and the line, and that is one solution, and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good solution if you can manage it. Another solution is right here to install a device called a ballon. And they manufacture these a one-to-one -one ballon. Ballon is a contraction of the words balanced to unbalanced. So it matches an unbalanced transmission line to a balanced antenna. It could in fact also be used to match a a balanced transmission line to an unbalanced antenna by reversing it, but that's very rarely done because of the fact that uh, most unbalanced uh, loads and lines have relatively low impedances like 73 ohms and it's pretty hard to find open wire line with a resistance like uh, a characteristic impedance like that. So that is a the problem with that particular design there uh, if you want to reverse a ballon. But you connect the unbalanced end of the ballon coil to your coax and the balanced end to your antenna and it's 
pretty easy. Let's take a brief foray into outer space, clear our minds, and start once again. A Balin coil physically looks like usually when you buy one, and you can buy them ready-made, looks like a box. I guess it's about the size of, oh, gee, I don't know, about the size of a large handset for a cordless telephone or something like that. And it has two little connectors here for the antenna terminals, like screw eyes, kind of. And then it has an SO239 type connector here that will fit your PL259 coaxial cable connector and so you connect the antenna to these uh, parts of the bell and right here and the and the uh, coax to the antenna down there. I don't know exactly what the interior schematic details of the ballon look like but uh, it's something like an ordinary transformer would be basically a one-to-one -one transformer with your balanced end here and your unbalanced end well let's uh, try that again there your unbalanced end like this and uh, that's really that should work as a balance it just provides an isolation between the input and the output. I don't believe that's exactly what the schematic diagram of a bell and coil is. They, they come up with various designs, uh, some fancier designs. The idea is that it should be a broadband bell that will cover at least 3 to 30 megahertz. And if you can get one that will cover 1.8 to 55 or 60 megahertz, so much the better. But that is the basic concept of a ballon. And when you have a ballon in your antenna system like that, connected where the antenna meets the feed line, so it'll be dangling up in the air or it'll be up on top of your mast, when you have a ballon like that, you can largely eliminate the problem of antenna currents that can occur on a transmission line. However, Back to outer space for just a brief bra brain rest. Testing one, two, three. When you have a dipole antenna like this, fed with coaxial cable or any type of transmission line, once again, you need to remember 90 degree angle for at least a quarter of a wavelength from the antenna and preferably for a half a wavelength or more away from the uh, antenna. Even if it's coaxial cable, even if you put a ballon coil there, that is the, uh, the best way then to get rid of antenna current problems and again avoid feed line resonances. And treat the line as a as you would a single wire with a velocity factor of approximately 95 percent for your calculations use the formula 234 divided by the frequency in megahertz to calculate one quarter of an electrical wavelength at the frequency of interest and then avoid any integral multiple n of that length. Avoid it so that you don't have resonance in your line. So that's uh, that'll conclude this part of the antenna current avoidance course. Good luck 73 and so long.